Welcome to the third and final part of this tutorial. In the two previous videos, we already saw how to model, texturize, how to paint our character, how to use materials, lights, and how to make the final render. Today, we will use all the renders we made to compose our final image in Photoshop. So, here I have imported all the images that we worked before, such as the main render, the shadow, mask, flat, depth, and the occlusion. I have also created two folders, one for the lights and one for the materials. In the lights folder, we have the lights with different angles and intensity. And inside the material folder, we have all the images that will help us to give the different textures to our character. So, to keep everything more organized, I usually use numbers for each material. You can leave them with the original name or organize them as you wish. I'm going to leave the main image at the bottom, and then I'll put the materials folder on top of it. To begin, we must turn off all the layers and only leave our main image activated. Okay, let's open the materials folder and activate the material number one. The matte cap. I usually start by using the overlay or soft light for this material. Once it is ready, you can adjust the opacity. The idea is to add the materials and at the same time to test which ones work and which ones don't. It is recommended that you have the navigation window activated to be able to see the character and the textures in more detail. In this case, I am going to leave the soft light. For the next material, the matte cap skeleton, I usually use the divide blending. Remember to always adjust the opacity or the fill to adapt the texture. The next material will be our cavity map. And, since this material is going to highlight the details of our character, I always like to adjust the level's values a little bit. You can try inverting this texture if you wish. Take your time to analyze what is best for your character, for his colors, or his environment. It's always good to make sketches, or to take notes of each idea that you want to use. What kind of background do you have in mind, or what kind of effects are you going to use? Everything is important. Always have a plan. This, trust me, will help you save a lot of time. So, I am going to choose overlay for this material. Okay. I'm going to continue with the number 7, the metal cap green Roma. For this material, I will use the soft light blending. If you wish, you can also adjust the colors of each layer. In this case, I am going to adjust the colors a little bit. You can use the hue saturation or the color balance to do this. The material number 5 and 6 are metals. So, I will name them to remember that. I am not going to use them now so, let's continue with the number 4, the soft solar material. For this material, I'm also going to adjust the colors a bit. This material is usually used to give a more pinkish tone to the skin, so I am going to use more reddish tones or oranges. I'm going to use the soft light blending, and I'm going to create a mask for this material. I won't use it at the moment, so I'll hide it. We will continue with that later. Now, we will continue with the flat material, which contains all the information about the colors of our character, but without the shadows. I generally use this material to bring back the original tones of my character. Normally, dodge color works pretty well, but you can look up for another blending. Always use the flat map to get those tones of the first render. I am going to leave it in color dodge. Okay, let's continue. Now I'm going to use the material number 9, which is the wet clay, and I will adjust the opacity to around 25. Now it's time to work with the lights. First select all the layers and apply the screen blending. Then turn them off. Let's see how they look one by one. Okay, let's start with light number one. As we can see, this light is affecting our entire character, and we don't want that. So, to solve this, we are going to use masks. Let's create the mask first, and then we will paint it black, to hide our light image. Then with a soft brush we will work on our mask, using the white color. By doing this, we will illuminate only the parts we want.
Remember that when you are using the mask tool, you can use the black color to hide and the white color to show the material. In this case the light image. Always remember to select the mask you are working on, if you don't, you will end up painting on your image. So, if we choose our mask and we use the white color, this will show our image, and if we use the black color, we will be able to hide it. We will repeat this process with every light. In my case I am not going to use them all. I usually do 5 to 7 renders with lights at different angles, and I usually only use a few of them. You can also adjust the colors of your light if you want, that will help you achieve new tones on your character. Remember that using masks always help us hide everything that we do not want to show. This is very important when you are working with lights. It is also important to find a balance and not saturate the lighting on the character. Once you have your lighting finished, we can continue with the depth material. The depth material will help us to separate the most important parts from the least important of your character. To do this we can simply adjust the levels. This will allow us to obscure the less important parts. In my case, the most important thing about my character is his face and his hands. So, I'm going to make the background a little darker. Then I will choose Overlay and adjust the opacity. Ok, we will continue with the ambient occlusion. For this material, we will also adjust the levels to get darker tones in certain parts of the shadow. Then I will use the multiply blending for this material. Ok, now I will use the shadow image. This should be on top of all the other's layers. I will also use the multiply blending for this one. Now we will begin to adjust the final details. We will start by going to materials and activating the number 4. The soft solar material. We are going to work with the mask, so remember that it must be in black. We can choose a soft brush and paint everything you want to have a more reddish tone. In my case I will work on his eyes, the mouth, the spots on his body, some veins, tongue and gums. Ok. Then we can work with the material number 8, the bubblegum. As this material is very pink, we can adjust its color with the help of the hue saturation. Then I will use the exclusion blending. This will give you a good skin-like tone and again, we will work with the mask. Remember that you can paint the mask with the paint bucket tool more quickly. Let's continue. To work in areas with brighter tones, such as metals, or perhaps if you want to achieve a wet effect for the tongue or gums, we can use the material number 5, which is one of our metals. I am going to change this one to a hard mix blending. Okay. Now let's create a new mask. By adjusting the opacity of our brush, we can give a more natural touch to the mouth, eyes and other parts. Take your time to work on all these details. Finally, this is it. This is our character with all the materials and lights. Now you will be able to create the background you want depending on your character. In my case I used a simple gradient background. To give it a little more realism, I added some hair in some parts. I also added a bit of smoke and other effects to merge all the colors. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to model and render in ZBrush, and also, on how to make the final composition in Photoshop.
I know it seems complicated, but it is not, everything is possible practicing. This is simply a guide for you to create your own conceptual artwork. Soon I will post more material about ZBrush, and there is also a surprise that I am working on. So, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please, leave a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos about ZBrush, Moho, Photoshop, and more. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.